Hello and welcome to the second episode for the iRacing High Definition Photo Tutorials. In this episode I'll be showing you how to use iRacing's Advanced Camera Tool. So we firstly begin by launching iRacing, making sure that we've configured our graphics and changed some parameters as shown previously in episode 1. So the first thing we'll need to do is find the point in the replay that we want to take a photo of. But just remember that if we want to keep more than one car in focus, it's going to take twice as much effort in Photoshop. So I highly recommend for your first uh, blurred shot that we just keep it simple and keep it with one car. And once we've found our location, pressing Ctrl F12 will bring up the advanced camera tool, and hitting Escape will close it. It may look a little complicated and confusing at first, but it's actually pretty straightforward. It's best just to experience a bit with what each option does. Let's go through a few key features that we'll need to use. Position type sets what type of camera you'll use. Selecting the fixed option is best for outside shots. Aim type tells the camera what to focus on. Using the at group or at car options are fine, but are limited in their movement as they're always going to be focusing on the pack of cars or a single car. Next are the X, Y and Z offsets. These are basically the numbers used to determine what position the camera is in. Either pressing on the arrow keys or using the keys A and D will change the position. Orient won't be usable unless you have chosen the fixed option for position type. These are parameters that let you manually adjust the camera height, placement and you can even change the angle so that it's leaning to the left or right. Leave these boxes checked as these are mostly to do with videos, however if you wish to change the aperture you can, but we can also change this in Photoshop later. And finally is the zoom or static field of view. If you select static field of view, the camera fixes the lens to a given angle using the field of view number you have chosen. With zoom mode, the slider represents the percentage of the car that will be visible on the display. At 100%, the car will take up the entire display, and at 50%, the car will be one half of the width of the screen. It's best to just use static field of view option, as this will not change because we are going to need to take two photos, both with one with the car and one without the car in it. So keeping this static field of view slider will guarantee the camera is not going to move. Again, it's just better to experiment yourself with these features. There's no right or wrong way to take a photo. Some methods are just better than others. Let's now move on to positioning the camera best for a speed shot. Speed shots maintain the focus of the subject whilst blurring the background in the opposite direction to which the car is going. I've already pre-positioned a photo to save time, but I've taken note of a few things. First thing you're going to have to think about is how many holes you're going to have to manually crop out in Photoshop such as the rear wing and windows, which I'll show you now. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to position this about here and noticing if I zoom in just a little bit with the field of view, you can see that there's all these holes we're going to need to fill up manually because when we select an area in Photoshop, it's just going to take the outside of the car. So we're going to have to do all these ourselves. So make sure you haven't got too many little sections like this and like that for your first try or it's going to become a bit, little bit difficult. It's nothing you don't have to avoid, but just keeping it in the back of your mind that you will have to do these things. The second thing is how many subjects are you going to have in the photo. The more cars that you want in focus, the more work it's going to be. And the third and final thing is how well your car blends in with the environment. Having a white car against a white background can make it very difficult once we start to edit in Photoshop. And once you've set everything up the way you like it, bring up the built-in screenshot tool by pressing Control shift print screen and then typing in a name. So I'm going to choose one that I've already set before, which is Tutorial with Car and Shadows, because that's what we're running now. And we're going to save it. iRacing is now taking, I think it's three or four images, uh, timesing it by uh, whatever it is, three. So that's going to be about 12 photos, uh, and then it's going to stick them all in one big image. Okay, so once that's done, we're going to take another photo in the exact same position, but this time without the cars. And that concludes the second episode of the iRacing High Definition Photo Tutorials. In episode number three, we'll be putting those two images in Photoshop, mixing them together, putting a blur on the cars, and doing a little bit of um, color correction as well. But until then, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.